Welcome back aboard USS Cod Submarine Memorial. I'm uh, Cod President Paul Ferrace, and we're up here on the forward deck, and we're joined by uh, Joe, uh, uh, our uh, esteemed uh, top-notch uh, tour guide. We're here to talk about some of Cod's hidden history on the forward deck. Now, you were all very enthralled with uh, the piece we did a while back about the door that never was, and today we're going to talk about the uh, Liberty Launch Cradle that is here but was never used in World War II. Uh, the fleet submarine uh, begins in, in earnest in the 20s with the V-Class, the big cruiser boats. And of course, being a cruiser boat, uh, they were giant and you didn't, couldn't always get into uh, shallow water areas or you may not have uh, the ability to get into a pier uh, to send your Liberty uh, crew ashore. So the, uh, the early V-boats like Nautilus and Narwhal, Argonaut, they carry two very big Liberty launches in the forward deck, or I should say under the forward deck. Uh, and that was uh, an excellent thing in peacetime. Uh, that continued the practice of carrying two uh, motor launches under the forward deck of the early uh, fleet boats, like the, uh, the Salmon, Sargo class, and even the Tambers. Uh, where they had two uh, segmented deck hatches. I'm going to kind of just illustrate. Now, we lose our deck hatch in the 1963 uh, dry docking funded by the Navy. Uh, it made sense not to uh, uh, reinstall the deck plates uh, for a Liberty launch that Cod never carried. But the forward end came to a point here, and it was curving. It uh, it met up with the uh, loading hatch for the torpedoes. It followed this curvature of the hull here and right back to where Joe was standing. Joe, show us where the end of that, uh, that Liberty launch, right there, right where Joe was standing. Um, there were four or five segments that would come up. Uh, they could be unlocked and stacked, uh, usually, as I understand it, in front of the uh, conning tower. Then the ship's uh, Torpedo recovery davit, which is uh, mounted over here. You see the two yellow uh, hold down cleats and the main uh, stanchion. We have a blank uh, in it so people don't uh, trip on it. Uh, that would be erected um, to allow the derrick to swing around, lift the boat out of the cradle down below, swing it around over the side and put it in the water. And of course, when you came back to the boat and need to stow it, it would lift the uh, the boat out of the water, swing it back around, remove the deck plates again, and lower it into the uh, into the superstructure. And we're going to go below in a minute to show you that. Now, the uh, the Gato class boats uh, had just one. Uh, they thought they would uh, make uh, the construction a little easier, and uh, they didn't see the need for two. So uh, the Gatos had one, and generally it was. Uh, it was on the port side. I know I, uh, Silver Sides has theirs. Uh, their original deck hatch gets replaced in uh, one of their more recent uh, redeckings. Uh, but it's uh, they still have the uh, parts, or at least as of 1992, they had the original deck segments uh, in storage. They have new uh, replica segments in place with their new decking. Uh, but uh, they have one on the port side. Uh, Cod never uh, had uh, a boat. Uh, in fact, as I understand it in wartime, the idea of having a wooden Liberty launch under the deck that could be shattered and blown to pieces that would float uh, up to the surface to give away the position of the submarine was uh, a big no-no. So in combat, the, uh, the early Liberty launches on these early patrols would have been shipped ashore. And uh, by the time Cod is built, 1943, Inflatable rubber boats are now around in plentiful quantities, and that made a whole lot more sense. Those could be stored in a small cylindrical pressure locker. Uh, we might show you the one we have up forward. I believe that locker was uh, initially used to uh, protect the outboard motor for the Liberty launch. Uh, later, that uh, served as uh, the stowage for the uh, two yellow rubber lifeboats that Cod carried that, of course, were used uh, in a variety of utility purposes, including uh, the ones, uh, they were the boats that allowed Captain Flucky of the Barb to send his uh, patrol, his 
team ashore to blow up the train. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we had our inflatable boats. We never used it. The deck was here. Down below, we're going to show you the, uh, the cradle that was built into the, uh, into the framework. Even though by the time cod is laid down, just like the door in the back of the conning tower, they did not stop to modify the blueprints. They went, kept going and, and building these uh, features uh, that were in, in, not expected to be used. Um, so we keep uh, our segmented hatch through our 51 recommissioning. In fact, Cod comes to Cleveland with her deck hatch, and sadly we use, lose it in 1963. So uh, Joe, uh, let's go below, and hopefully you'll come down and join us. Hello, now we're back under the forward superstructure of Cod, and let me tell you, this is uh, quite the uh, cobweb uh, museum by itself. Um, I'm sitting here on the port side uh, above the waterways. We're going to do a program about those waterways and how they have become a maintenance nightmare uh, for all of us fleet boats that are sitting still and, and uh, not able to flush these out on a regular basis. But again, another uh, topic for another day. Now, looking under here, this is where the, the uh, delivery launch would have been kept had we carried one which again, COD being mid-war construction, we didn't have them. Uh, Joe, you wanna show, kinda of show the outline of those frames, how they're curving. Yeah. And uh, of course, what you're sitting, talks about what you're sitting on there. This was added after the boat was removed and they didn't have to have the boat mounted down here. This was installed for storage for equipment that they may have needed later after this launch was removed and no longer used in this position. Right. And our little, now how are you going to hold this boat down and, and lock it in place? That would be these brackets here. Okay. Now, that's all we have. i got to believe the holes there. There might have been some kind of a through bolt that went through there. There might have been a block of wood uh, in those uh, two cleats. Um, but there's a, there's, a, there's a third one up here, uh, again, to uh, brace the boat. And of course, these are just braces. Um, uh, the fear would be, of course, that uh, somehow a depth charge might loosen or remove the upper hatch, then you've got a boat floating free. What kept the boat from floating free, uh, Joe? That would be these brackets here, this hold down bracket. I don't know if the camera can get that. There's another one on this side that would serve the same purpose. There's another one back there. Right over here. Now, apparently these are, are swung away and locked down uh, in service, they would have swung out and, and locked down the gunnels of the boat. There's one here. Uh, Evan is our cameraman. and I, Oh, there's one inboard. Let's get a good close-up of this one, Evan. There, you can see that very clearly. There's a, uh, there's a turnbuckle on the top. These brackets swing out and would lock down the, uh, the top gunnel of the boat to keep it securely locked in place, again, had we, had we carried one. Now, you see a lot of framing in here that obviously is added to uh, strengthen the forward superstructure uh, uh, once uh, it was realized that we wouldn't be carrying uh, a Liberty launch. So you see these extra frames here uh, added as stiffeners. And of course, we've added some, uh, some uh, additional conduit here for uh, the ship's electrical uh, uh, system. Uh, so that we can uh, do some welding to maintain this area. Uh, but while we're under here, uh, Evan, you want to pan around. Everything under here should be black. Um, when we uh, sandblasted the boat uh, in 1988, uh, we didn't understand what the exact color should be, and there was a, uh, a special on haze gray paint. So uh, the, uh, the company that was hired to sandblast it, it did everything in haze gray. Uh, we've come back over the years and, and our project uh, going forward is to uh, sandblast as much as we can, clean off the surface rust and uh, return it to the, uh, the black color. Uh, but uh, while we're here, uh, there's some other things I want to point out. Um, Joe, uh, the, uh, you want to show us the... Uh, Evan, you might have to get up off your duff and, and get over there. Joe is standing over the soft patch. Joe, talk about the soft patch. 
That's a soft patch in case they had to remove any heavy equipment, batteries, or something that they couldn't get out of the regular hatchways. They would be able to cut a hole in the pressure hull, get out that heavy equipment, and then when they would seal it back up, it, you can see there are many, many bolts to seal it up to make it pressure, pressure proof or pressure tight to seal up the pressure hull. That's something we can talk about later. Uh, but you know, and then of course this large structure over here is uh, our forward gun mount. Um, um, by the way, if uh, any of the spiders here, Evan, are black widows and they bite you, um, you're remember, you're on. yeah, you're on your own. I don't think we have any medical coverage for uh, toxic spider bites. But this is the uh, foundation uh, for the four inch 50 we carried for the first five patrols. Um, it hasn't been painted on the outside, but the inside was uh, blasted, cleaned, and, and painted black uh, a couple years ago when we, uh, when we uh, restored the forward gun mount, even though we won't put a gun up there because our focus date is, is later when we had the 5-inch. But anyway, so here we are uh, in this area. Uh, it's, uh, it's <clears throat> as I said, it's some of Cod's hidden history for a Liberty launch we never carried. Um, and uh, we'll talk about some more hidden history on some later uh, missions down below. Just remember to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell, and we'll come back for more. Thanks for joining us.